It's time again for The Insider with Chuck Kuala and Scott Jensen, sponsored by the Wisconsin Counties Association and the Tommy G. Thompson Center on Public Leadership. Hi, I'm Chuck Kuala, former Senate Majority Leader. And I'm Scott Jensen, former Assembly Speaker. And we're The Insiders. So, Scott, here you got Robin Voss, the uh, longest serving speaker in the Assembly. He is facing potentially a recall challenge. He's going to have problem, and he's going to have an opponent in the primary. And you've got a Republican convention coming here. The presidential, the presumptive presidential nominee, mm-hmm. Donald Trump, is actually supportive of getting rid of the longest serving speaker and as a Republican in Wisconsin. What's going on? Well, it's well, not it's people not- in the district who are upset with Robin Voss. I think that's pretty clear. This is the second time they have tried to recall him, and it's the second time that we have almost all the signatures being gathered by people who are not from the district. Over 90% of the signatures were gathered by people who are not from the district, and two-thirds of the signatures were gathered by people who are not from Wisconsin. So this is clearly a national effort and not a a local uprising by people who are upset uh, with the speaker. Um, I think, you know, the, the elections board is going to have to wade through, our elections commission is going to have to wade through all of these signatures and, and, and figure out which ones are valid and which ones are not. But as we saw before, there's, you're, you're going to see here that there are false signatures. You're going to see that there are um, people who signed multiple times. You're going to see that there's signatures that were after the deadline for when signatures could be collected. Um, there are signatures collected by felons. Um, there are signatures that appear on the form that people will testify, that's not my signature, I didn't sign it. So there's a lot of shenanigans that went on to get the signatures. Whether or not when the election board goes through it line by line, there's still enough signatures standing that Robin Voss has to go to a recall. It's something we're going to have to see here. What is kind of weird is that there's like two uncertain elements here. I think one is, does the recall occur at the same time as the primary? Or is it like a little before or a little after? Does one affect the other? Could the speaker... Uh, win his primary and be on his way to being reelected in the fall, but then get recalled for the last three months of his term or something uh, this time. I mean, all of that is possible. And then what is Donald Trump going to do? Last time, President Trump was very involved in this race. He was all over it. He has not really said anything this time for this recall. Um, and Recently, Speaker Voss said that he would be voting for the president. So I don't know. Is the president really going to take a shot at him? We'll see. Well, clearly, the reason that this is all happening is because the president has been taking a shot at Robin Voss. It was not because Robin Voss all of a sudden became unpopular with Justice, former Justice Gableman, and he decided to do something about this. This is really something telling, I believe, about Donald Trump and where the Republican Party is headed. This is the longest serving speaker in the history of the state of Wisconsin. He's a Republican. He's a conservative Republican. And yet Donald Trump wants him out. And why is that? It is because Robin Voss was not willing to go to extreme measures to try to overturn the 2020 election because it was clear in Wisconsin that the election was run freely and fairly. And courts determined that this is an election that was done correctly. What this is to me the most important implication of this whole process. I don't think that Robin Voss is going to lose. I think that Donald Trump has a lot of other fish to fry, so he's not going to focus on this, as Scott says. But I think what it is, is it's the canary in the coal mine to tell you what's going to happen with Donald Trump on the on, as we go forward. Right now, he has more sink offense than I've ever seen in the political game. Every one of the people auditioning to be his vice president has not committed to saying that they will support the next election, the results of the next election. They they are not willing to do that. That is unheard of in Wisconsin, in, in the United States, in our democracy. And what I think this tells you, this is the canary in the coal mine that tells you if Trump were to get in, he will not relinquish power. And I think Bill Maher, who's a commentator out there who kind of makes nasty comments about Dems and Republicans has said this, and so have other people. And I think that you have to look at what this guy signals and his opposition to Robin Voss who is a conservative Republican, when it's only because he won't say that the 2020 election was rigged and take actions to make sure that happens, 
Watch that, folks. That's a telling thing to do. That means something really, really bad about Donald Trump and where we're headed in the future. And I think as a Republican, I am hopeful that we stop taking shots at each other and aim our fire at our opponents, the people we disagree with politically, rather than the folks for who we are almost in complete agreement with each other uh, on the issues. Uh, I think it was Ronald Reagan who said that someone who, I, who agrees with me 80 percent of my time is 80 percent of the time is my friend, not my enemy. So I, I'm hoping that they'll remember that adage. But we'll see. We, we seem to be enjoying brawling lately. You would think all of us Republicans are Irish at the moment, but we're just uh, we're just enjoying the fight. Do watch what's really going on here and watch the canary in the coal mine. We'll see you next time. Thanks. You've been listening to The Insiders with Chuck Walla and Scott Jensen, sponsored by the Wisconsin Counties Association and the Tommy G. Thompson Center on Public Leadership. <laughs>